Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Justice. Conversation. All right, and you are live. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of A Justice Conversation. I'm Suave Gonzalez with Dr. Brian O'Neill. He's sick today, so he couldn't be on the show. But today we have a magnificent show, and we're going to be talking about wrongful conviction. We're highlighting one case that's mean a lot to the people in Philadelphia and to the people that know this individual, John Brookings. So welcome, everybody, to the show. Welcome, Celeste. Uh, Ms. Murray, Cole, Colin, Karen, Mark, and Andrew, and Jennifer Lopez. I had to say that. Uh, we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into it. Um, Johnny Brookings is an individual confined by SCI Phoenix and Philadelphia. And he is a mentor to many of the brothers in the prison system. And I'm talking from experience because I've been in the prison system for 31 and a half years. And Johnny was a mentor to me and still is. And we owe it to him to educate the public on what's going on with his case and why the county that he's from is refusing to uh, release certain information that could put him in the streets. So with that, we just gonna dive in and I'm gonna start with Celeste. Celeste, we know that you've been out there advocating not only for Johnny, but for wrongful conviction in um, uh, in general. So what can you tell us, what can you tell the public, 185,000 people that's gonna be listening to us in the tri-state area about this case? that we don't already know? Well, I think one of the most important things to highlight is how wonderful Johnny is as a person. Um, every person that you talk to that knows Johnny says the same exact thing about him. Um, and he really is one of those people that should not have been in prison uh, at all in the first place. But if he were able to come home, he would make such a difference in our communities outside as he's making a difference in the communities inside. Um, one thing that I love about Johnny is we have a mutual love for fitness and he has sent me workouts that have like killed me in the gym. Um, and it's just one of the, he didn't have to do that, but he cares and he wants to really nurture relationships with people inside and outside. Um, Johnny is a wonderful husband and grandfather. He has a huge support network outside ready and waiting for him to come home and ready and waiting to embrace him. Um, you know, I think one of the interesting and, you know, worst things about this case is you know, Johnny, we're in Philadelphia County. Um, it might be different. Um, I believe under DA Krasner, they have exonerated now 15 people um, in Philadelphia in the last, what, 19 months or so, or however, I'm sorry, I don't know exactly how long he's been at this point. Um, but that's, that is just outrageous, right? And people are able to go in front of the courts and they're getting support uh, from the prosecutor side, which is just beautiful to see. And so it would be really interesting to see what Bucks County would be able to do if a prosecutor were able to sit there and say, hey, look, uh, we want to talk about justice, right? Not convictions. Um, and that really justice needs to be done. And so whatever that is to make uh, justice happen in this case, they need to do that. What county is this case coming from? Bucks County. Bucks County. Um, and the reason I ask is because we so close to Philadelphia, but yet so different. You know, in Philadelphia, we have a radical DA that is really, it's about justice. And a lot of people is against him because they feel that he's too soft, right? But what people fail to realize that we have people like Johnny in prison, you know, for decades now when they should not be in prison. 
And then we have people in the streets that should be in prison. And I say that as, as a person that's been in prison myself, um, I, I, you know, I say that. And, and I'm confident and I stand behind that because I know this individual. You know, this, this man, not only was he a mentor to many of us, he saved a lot of people's lives in prison, you know, because in the prison system, we don't have a good health care system. And that's when Johnny used to come in and like, listen, I'm going to help you work out. I'm going to help you lose some weight. You know, it's, it's good for your heart. He did it for me. I know that for a fact. And, and I really, really, it really, really turns me off when I see cases like this and when I see DAs and these counties that refuse to reveal certain evidence that could put these individuals in the streets. You know, so here at Usala, uh, uh, what we gonna do and what we committed to do, if y'all wanna do this, at least once a month, we can all come back and talk about this and keep the pressure on because people people listen. We have people in this, in this show and they listen. And one thing I know about certain politicians in this region, they don't like to be pressured. When the pressure is on, that's when they react. And we must keep the pressure. We got to bring Johnny home. You know, with everything that's going on in the prison system now, we have to bring that brother home. We cannot let the prison system take him away from us. They have done that for close to 30 years, and we can't allow it. So, Mr. Mark, um, as a person that working with wrongful convictions, what can we as a community and this region do to ensure that Johnny get a fair chance in court? Well, first off, everyone needs to be aware of how common wrongful convictions are. Our entire criminal justice system is a farce. We have something like estimates say roughly 5% of people going to prison were innocent of the crime they were convicted of. That's an outrage. Johnny's case is one of the more outrageous given how obvious it was already at the time and reinvestigation. And there's been a lot of new developments lately, which I'm sure we're gonna get into on the show have, have brought to light. Um, but it, Johnny never should have been convicted in the first place, much less we shouldn't be here 30 years later, just about um, still trying to get him out. Um, as Celeste said, he's an incredible person. He's kind, warm, caring. He wouldn't hurt anybody. He is a force for good, and we need him in our community. And so um, what I do at Georgetown University, where I'm a professor, um, I co-teach a class called Making an Exoneree. I co-teach it with my childhood friend, Marty Tankliff, who was himself wrongfully convicted and spent over 17 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit before being exonerated. And we try to inspire our students to work on other cases. And we picked Johnny's case after meeting his lovely wife, Karen, who's also with us here. And I'm sure the listeners are gonna to love to hear from Karen, uh, who really um, brought to light the injustice in Johnny's case to us. And we got our students working on it. We've got two of them here, Cole and Andy. I wanna make sure that they have a chance to speak. Um, they reinvestigated the case, uh, did an amazing job, created a documentary um, that's available on YouTube. And then, we also got the attention of the podcast Undisclosed and Colin Miller's with us too. And I'm sure he's gonna talk about uh, this podcast, which is fantastic. And that all the listeners should be paying attention to right now. But this is a, in some sense, all too common of a story because wrongful convictions happen all the time, but it's also a really shocking one because Johnny deserves to be free and to come home and shouldn't spend one more day in prison. It's been far too long for something he didn't do. So my question to you is, do, we, do you think that the reason the district attorney is refusing to even listen to this case is because Johnny is a black man? Do you think well, race plays an issue in this case? Race plays an issue in every single dimension of the criminal justice system, from arrest to prosecution to sentencing to you know, what happens even in prison to parole to reentry. So there's no way to deny the role of race in every single dimension of the criminal justice system. I also think, and as was brought up earlier, the fact that it's not in Philadelphia where you have an exceptional DA, and I mean both exceptional in that he's unusual and different from others, but also exceptionally good, which is that most DAs and what we have in Bucks County is you know, run of the mill, unfortunately, which is prosecutors don't want to reopen cases. They don't want to find out the truth. They want to bury cases, they want to bury people. 
And sadly enough, Johnny's victim to that mentality, which is the prosecutor's offices, no matter what comes to light, they don't want to admit that they made a mistake. We went through this in my friend Marty's case. We went through it in Valentino Dixon's case when we got him exonerated through our class a couple of years ago. We've got more exonerations coming, and I really hope that Johnny's is next. Um, but this is the way criminal justice works in America. It's a racist system. They're racist people, not everybody, but many. And the impact is completely racially disparate. And there's no way to deny the impact of race in American criminal justice outcomes, sadly. I mean, and the reason the reason I asked that question because we research we research um Johnny's case and we noticed that the victim is a white woman and Johnny's a black man. And yeah. we know the history of Bus County. Oh, yeah. Bus County got a vicious history, right? So it cut it's clear cut for us when we seen it, like, whoa, you know, it make us wonder how this would have been a white man with um, money, influential yeah. family, would we be talking about this case? Or would that same, or would that person be in court with, with a new trial? You know, so that's why we yeah. asked that yeah. question. And, yeah. and knowing the history of Bus County, it's, it's clear that race plays an issue to us when we researched it. You know, Without we might doubt. be wrong. We might be wrong, but it's clear. So we're not wrong about Johnny, though. I'll tell you that. No, we know that. We we you know when we we read some of the case, we couldn't read it all, and we got to feel like, what is this dude doing in jail? Yeah. What is this guy doing in jail? For almost thirty years. For almost thirty years. Other, you know, the only reason we could come up with is two. The DA don't want to admit they wrong, and this is a black man, and they feel that we could just play with his life. Yeah, but you know, times are changing now. Public pressure is different than it was even five years ago, much less 10 or 20 when it, there was no such thing. Um, you know, we can now get the public attention, get awareness in a way that that wasn't possible before. And I think that's the kind of pressure we need to keep on. We've got a um, a change.org petition um, for John Brookins. There's a website which the students are going to talk about. Uh, there's the Undisclosed podcast. There's more and more people hearing the name John Brookins. And I'm hoping that that's going to put pressure on the DA to finally do the right thing. They know it's the right thing to do. Anyone who looks at this case knows that he's innocent. The problem is the institution doesn't want to admit it was wrong. There's also the racial element you mentioned. And it's really hard to undo, but we've got to keep the pressure on and increase it. And I hope all your listeners get fired up about this case and, and you know, listen to the podcast, watch the documentary and uh, get involved, sign the petition, call your officials, especially if you're in Bucks County or in Pennsylvania in general, um, because we got to get Johnny out and bring him home. So my question to the students, when y'all first got involved in this case, what did it do for you personally? Hi. Um, well, obviously, uh, Mark's class and Georgetown's Prison and Justice Initiative in general is um, life changing for all of the incarcerated people, but it has helped um, all the people um, that finally feel like they are being listened to for the first time in their lives in many cases. Um, but for us as students, it has also been life changing. I completely switched my career path after um, meeting John and all of his supporters and hearing his story. So I'm working at a law firm now. I'm currently in the process of applying to law school. Um, so hopefully have a tangible impact on uh, reforming the criminal justice system in the future. Um, but I do think that this whole experience just shows you what kind of person John is. All these people that are here with us on this Zoom, we had the chance to speak with, um, with the exception of Colin, when we were making our documentary. And every person that we spoke to with Celeste and the Transformation Yoga people with Brie um, and Jennifer have just talked about the kind of um, resilience that John has. And when we met John in prison, I was struck by how he has not one ounce of resentment um, and he's just ready to come home and live his life and you know help the people like him um, in the future 
Um, so I just think that he can just do so much more good on the outside and he's done a whole lot of good on the inside as well. So um, I just want to echo the putting the pressure on with our documentary and our class and with this podcast and Colin's podcast, I think that um, getting John's story out there is so important because he deserves to come home. Yes. How about you, Andrew? Uh, yeah, first of all, it's great to be with you. Um, I'm dialing in from Dublin, Ireland here. Um, and so in that regard, coming over and taking Mark's classes with the Prisons and Justice Initiative, I really had very limited knowledge of um, of the US ju judicial system and prison system and how it operated. And um, so I was kind of almost in a state of disbelief um, during Mark's classes when he so clearly outlined the issues um, that were that were involved in it. And then meeting meeting Johnny, it just became crystal clear how damaging it can be. Um, I mean, since since returning home to Ireland, John and Karen have both been amazing friends to me and that's that's probably the greatest impact that this um that meeting him has had you know he's i've kept in touch with him for you know almost 18 months now just sending him messages he sent me workout plans i told him about my life updates as i'm leaving college and moving into the world and um, he's just such a supportive person and if he if he's able to have that impact on me across the atlantic ocean i, I mean i could only imagine uh, the impact that he could have um when he does eventually get out um so just an, an amazing, a truly amazing person and a massive impact on my life. And the students made a website that I want to make sure all your listeners hear about. It's bringbrookinshome.com. Bringbrookins, B-R-O-O-K-I-N-S, home.com. You should yeah, check before, it out. Before we, close the show, before we close the show, we want to make sure that every website, every documentary where we can find Johnny's information right. is I'm giving over the air. But I just want to say that I remember years ago when I was in and wasn't sure if I was coming out or not, I used to see Celeste when she was going to school and she had this program where she visited people on death row and told stories from innocent people. And I always thought that that was so decent, right? Because that's something that y'all students don't really have to do, but y'all do it because y'all want to do the right thing. So we want to thank y'all for taking that time because even though we're just talking about Johnny, there's more people that could benefit if Johnny gets justice. You know, for every case that we see come out, somebody else benefit. And this is why it's so important for us in the Philadelphia region. We have a high rate of wrongful convictions. And like Celeste said, in the last 18 months, the DA had released a bunch of people, right? And there's still more people that need to be released. And even though we haven't deal with Bucks County, we, we we are. You know, you got our word from Usala that we're going to keep the pressure on. Like, we independent. So we could just do these shows every day if we want. And to they listen, because they have to listen. And to the people out there that's listening, you know, I always tell the people, I just spoke to... um some people from um, NSNBC yesterday. And I was telling them like, why don't y'all address these type of cases? And their response was, oh, we don't see the interest. We don't see the interest, right? And, and if you listen to that response, it's crazy. Like, we don't see the interest. Y'all don't watch, y'all got journalists. Y'all don't see what's going on across the country. And what I think it is that a lot of people think that this is like an urban problems. And it's a black problem. This is what they really think. And I say, okay, you know, cool. I'm going to keep doing these shows. I'm going to keep doing these shows. Because I believe that people like Celeste encourage us and motivate us. And she just won. I could go on and on with the people that's been fighting for people in prison. You know. And I, and I mentioned Celeste because she's on the show. And I know her and I feel comfortable mentioning her. Right, with the work that she's done and the work that she's doing. And Mr. Mark Harwood, we also want to thank you because we are very aware of the work that you're doing. Um, we just glad that your work is spreading over to PA now. And maybe we could get more people, you know, to apply for some help. But yes, um, wrongful convictions are real people. We have more people that need to come home. 
um, when I talked to the brothers at Phoenix that we was going to do this show, they, they were so happy. And a couple of them was like, well, how about me? And you already know who I'm talking about, Celeste. Um, I got ER. So, um, Miss Karen. You're talking about Eric Reddick? No, I'm talking about Eric Reddick. That's that's my man. That's another one. About He's about one of our other cases we covered, too. We're working on his case, too. Then I'm talking about Eddie Ramirez. Okay, and the other ER. Uh, so, um, these are guys that we all, we were all mentored by John Brookins at some point in our lives in the same prison. You know, I got the benefit, the most benefit, because I was like on the same block, on the same tier with him, and we work in the same place. But these are all people that Johns has touched their lives in, in a positive way. And when I told him we was doing a show to highlight his kid, they were so happy. And, um, but Miss Karen, what can we do as a, how can we use our platform at Usala Media to ensure that people are listening to your voice? Well, first of all, I, I truly want to say thank you to you, Suave, and to Professor O'Neill from Westchester. Of course, I want to thank everyone on this panel today, Mark Howard, Marty, if he pops in, Colin, Celeste, Bree, Jennifer, Cole, and Andy. Um, when I sent email out, I got more of a response than I thought I would. And that's just a testament to John. You know, for John is the person that he is and his character speaks volumes. You know, people often say to me, Karen, how, how can you do this? Or John is so lucky to have you. But I say, no, I'm lucky to have him. I'm very lucky to have him. And it's easy to do this because he doesn't deserve to be there. Um, and following what Cole said, he has no resentment. I have more anger and resentment for the two. I have enough for both of us, but he doesn't carry that trait, you know? Um, and I just want to follow what Celeste said about Larry Krasner. What you can do, number one, is to continue to put pressure on the politicians for John. I, and I, and I, I say this about John, but there's so many others, so many other people. I mean, Celeste will probably get into it later about commutation, you know, about the relief valve in Pennsylvania to getting those lifers out of prison that are deserving and John being one of them. Um, but again, following what Celeste said about Larry Krasner, I met Larry Krasner a few years ago and I shared with Larry Krasner about John's case. And he was already, where is he? What precinct was it? I want to look into this. And when I told him it was Bucks County, he just said, I can't help you. And I felt disheartened. And then Larry Krasner, you know, won a uh, district attorney and uh, he instituted the wrongful conviction, the integrity unit in, in Philadelphia, which is amazing. Um, releasing approximately 17 exonerees now. Um, but Philadelphia is not the only county in Pennsylvania that has innocent persons wrongly convicted and serving sentences in Pennsylvania. In the past, Bucks County has had and has carried a reputation for being harsh, for being unjust to the African-American communities. And I say that in the past, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and I'm gonna speak freely for the first time. I believe in my heart that I'd like to believe in my heart that the current district attorney, Matt Weintraub, who had absolutely nothing to do with this case 30 years ago, who himself, I think, was a public defense, I'm sorry, he was a prosecutor at the time, and he moved on from Bucks County to go elsewhere, and then he came back and became the district attorney. But I believe in my heart, based on his current events, that Matt Weintraub is seeking to heal the police relations in Bucks County between the police and the African-American community. He has purchased a movie and he's doing town hall meetings. The movie is called Walking Wild Black. He has platformed on that and he's also attended at least two African-American protests for Black Lives Matter in the very recent weeks to months. So with that in mind, I'd like to personally ask him 
to look into my husband's case with a clear vision and turn over the DNA, turn over the evidence in this case. I'm seeking his assistance to help heal the African-American community in Bucks County. I'm from the African-American community. I was born and raised in the African-American community and I've seen the disparities within my own family, with my neighbors and my friends, not just John. But right now I'm speaking to Matt Weintraub and I am basically asking him publicly to look into my husband's case that he had nothing to do with, recognizing that, that police don't always get it right. And we're talking about 30 years ago, these police officers are gone, most of them are dead. And I'd like to see him pick up the torch and really help to heal this community by looking into my husband's case, by handing over the DNA and the evidence. We're seeking transparency, be a part of that. Be a part of that and show us that you're a district attorney that cares about one other citizen of Bucks County, and that would be John Brookins, my husband. Wow. I say this, that in able to bring healing to a community, you have to be fair. And in being fair, being making some decisions that not everybody's going to like. And Part of being there for Johnny is to grant him his release. Because we all know, you know, the evidence is clear. The evidence is clear that we have an innocent man in prison. And if the district attorney really want to bring healing to the community, then he do the right thing. Then he do the right thing. And it's up to us. It's up to us. And I'm when I when I mean us. I mean Latinos, I mean brown, I mean black, blue, to keep the pressure on on these district attorneys. You see, because for what I see is they, they play the role, right? We care about black lives matters. We really do care, right? But if you do care, then do the right thing. Don't just put up a front. You know, I go down to Center City all, every day. I work down there. And I see these signs in these stores that say, Black Lives Matters. But when you go in the store, they following you around all day long. It happens all the time to me. Right? And I always say, so if Black Lives Matter, why, why, why is you so scared of me? You think I'm gonna steal something? And it's the same thing with these district attorneys in these counties. Black Lives Matter. That's just a showboat for the community. If they really matter, if they really matter, bring the case to the public, show the evidence. And if you really think he's guilty, then prove it. Prove it. Prove it. Prove, prove it. The evidence. Yes. You can both release the evidence that could give him a chance to prove his innocence. And this go for all wrongful convictions, not just Johnny. For all of them. Like I said, we lucky in Philadelphia to have somebody that was a lawyer first. You know, that protected people's rights first before he became district attorney. You know, that's the difference that we have in Philadelphia. We lucky that we have relationship, personal relationships with our district attorney in Philadelphia. He's not someone that we can't reach. We could just get on the phone and reach Larry Krasner if we want. That's the difference. You know, the difference is that when we invite Larry to the community to hear the community, he comes out. I was in an event with him in Philadelphia with half of the community cursed him out. And he stood there. As a matter of fact, he was the only elected official that stood there throughout the whole event. That's a true leader. That's a person that really want to change the climate in the community. This district attorney in Bucks County, to me, from researching him, he's putting up a front. And I'm speaking for Suave Gonzalez, no one else. He's putting up a front. If you really want to heal the community, you start by bringing Johnny's case and letting him out of prison. That's how you start. That's how you bring healing. That's how the people know that you really about your work. Not just saying Black Lives Matter. Because anybody can say that. Those are just words to me. 
It's okay. actions. It's actions. Absolutely. And we need Johnny home. I'm going to keep saying it. We need Johnny home. And to the people that's listening to us, just because we're talking about Johnny, it don't mean that we're not representing. We're representing all wrongful convictions. All of them. And y'all know who we're talking about. But today, this whole hour is for Johnny. And we said that, and, and that's how we're going to keep it. That's how we're going to keep it. So, Mr. Collin, you haven't said nothing yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm one of the hosts of the Undisclosed podcast. We learned about Johnny's case from the terrific class that Mark and Marty did with their students at Georgetown. And this to us has all the hallmarks of a wrongful conviction We've worked with Larry Krasner in his office in five exonerations in the past few years. Unfortunately, that mechanism does not exist because Johnny's case is outside of Philadelphia. Uh, the big take home I have is his case was supposed to be heard by the Board of Pardons in Pennsylvania. John Fetterman, Lieutenant Governor, is making a big push to have that be a body that can remedy and rectify wrongful convictions. And the biggest thing your listeners can do is right now it takes a five to zero vote of the Board of Pardons to have relief given to a defendant. There are efforts to make that a four to one vote or a three to two vote. And the best thing your listeners can do is contact your representatives and say, we want to take it from a five zero vote at the Board of Pardons. That's going to help John Brookins. It's going to help other people who are wrongfully convicted. And this is their best chance to get released. And let me say this, people. Uh, a few years ago, we was pushing hard for parole eligibility for lifers. And then this uh, lieutenant governor came in off it, which is a blessing. And we, we start seeing more people getting commuted. However, we should not stop pushing for parole eligibility for lifers. Because to me, right, this commutation process will come to an end when Wolf get out of office. When he get out of office in the, in the next few years, we might not see this m many people getting commuted. So we still need to keep pushing these legislators to push a bill for parole eligibility for lifers. Let's not let them put a band-aid on the problem. You know, they could let five people, six people out every time they have these commutation hearings. That's not enough. We have over 5,500 lifers in the state of Pennsylvania. That's not enough. So we should keep pushing for parole eligibility for lifers. Even though I appreciate what Lieutenant Governor is doing, I'm on. Um, I know plenty of brothers coming home. Personally, I still want people to keep pushing for parole eligibility for lifers. Let's not forget. We can't let them put a band-aid on the problem. And on the phone right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. John Brookins. Johnny, what's up? Hey, what's up with you, man? How you feel? All right. Thank I mean, you. I'm, um, we're just glad to be able to do this show, give you the whole hour. Um, we are committed to bringing your case to the general public. And we even told your wife and um, your supporters that if they want to come on every once a month and talk about this case and keep it in the light of the public, we will do that. Thank you, brother. Anytime. Anytime. Because we need brothers like you out here. Uh, we want brothers like you out here. Uh, I'm tired of paying my membership to the gym. It's, it's costly. So I probably could get some free lessons out of you. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, um, um, this is a serious topic, man, that affects many people and we glad that you're on the line what do you want to tell the people you know about yourself and about your case to get them involved engaged well, well, I, just, I just want to thank you guys i want to thank you for the whole event today i want to thank the students andy cole and Amory. i want to thank the professor and attorney uh martin and martin from georgetown i want to thank colin colin Miller from Colin Miller and Don Smoke. I want to thank my great friend, Jennifer Celeste Free. Thank my advocate friend, Sandra. And I want to also thank my beautiful ex wife, Karen. I want to 
different stages of my journey to Ray Cook. And I want to thank I want to thank you all for giving me such so much of your time. And and, and all you did was genuine, selfless act of kindness and encouragement for a better tomorrow, not just for myself, but for those who have yet to see me. I am truly grateful for this. This moment. is a call from SBI. Phoenix State Correctional Institution. This call is subject to reporting and monitoring. I am truly grateful for this moment. I have not, I, I have, I have nothing but gratitude for this opportunity. At this point, at, at one point when I uh, prison, I did not think I would live to see this, live to see or witness this day when, when the events are taking place on my behalf. And I feel honored and blessed to be part of the beautiful and wonderful people that's doing everything possible to right the wrongs of the unjust criminal justice system. And I thank you very much for believing in me. And I want to say that, uh, the Barney, I wouldn't have been saying that without the, all the letters all the time. I heard him read from him, but what did uh, uh, Mark was saying? He said he put the thousands and thousands of letters out. At one point, I was up to like 100 letters a month, sending out different and just letters to every people in the university, um, any professional field. I was, I was, I had a description to any law journal, news journal, any, anyone that would actually listen, but 95, 95.9% of the stuff that was sent out, I may have got one, one response back, and it was always like, uh, we're underfunded, uh, we don't have enough people. And there's always people out there. There's never anyone in the system that's thinking that ever offered, offered any assistance or any good correction. So in Pennsylvania, you need someone that's really want to help individuals, such as myself, anyone that's wrong with these issues that's in Pennsylvania that's really, really need funding for that. For someone to actually help not just the person in the industry, there's no assistance in no direction. So I spent a lot of money on kindness, trying to bring attention to myself and others at the same time too. But it seemed like everything was going on deaf ears. Because a lot of times I would make thousands and thousands of copies of my sharp petition. And, 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 uh, this is a call from that. SBI, Phoenix State Correctional Institution. This call is subject to reporting and monitoring. And send them out to the innocent project that actually requested it when they actually sent it back to me. It was like, it never opened it. It was never a page folded back or anything. It like you just got it, held onto it, and, and just sent it back to me. So it, it had to be, something had to be on that. We've got individuals out there right now that's in the reading and to take this stuff and actually demonstrate and, and actually give people positive feedback and hope and not selling individual dreams. Because we had to encourage the went for a lot of uh, professors and organizations that came in and actually said, it would help help us or help not help you, but come to find out these signs and type of great that when they come in with the certification that they wouldn't actually help us. So now uh, I'm just happy that the time has changed in this and that and we're in the system of change in Pennsylvania, a plan that uh, Pennsylvania is turning into the second city state where it gives everyone that's that has that has that that's program compliant, everyone that's wrong with it and uh, and everyone that's been uh, they had a big ticket down through the whole time. They, 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 they have been prosecuted. And I, I appreciate you, Swap, for everything that you're doing, man. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Beautiful words. And what y'all heard there is the voice of an innocent man in prison that's really asking the, the public to fall behind his petition and support him. Because supporting Johnny is. It, it's, it's, it's the only way we're going to bring healing to the Bucks County community. Absolutely. And if we really believe, and if we really believe in justice, then we stand behind him. So, um, where can we, um, the listeners, go to to learn more about Johnny's case? Let's start with Mark. You know, what's out there that the public could just tap in and learn about Johnny? You know, where they could sign the petition. Um, what upcoming events we have planned to keep bringing um, 
this case to life? Well, first off, his website, like I mentioned before, bringbrookenshome.com is the first place to go. There you'll find a link to the change.org petition. Please sign it and you'll see the documentary and you'll read about his case. You'll get a, a short, concise summary of his case um, that was made by the students uh, with my supervision and Marty Tankless as well. So that to me is the go-to. Um, obviously there's the Undisclosed podcast that has two episodes so far released with two more to come. That's fantastic that a lot of people are listening to and if you haven't started yet, you need to get on right now. There's some suspense building up um, and I don't want to you know, give uh, any spoilers away right now, but there's some good stuff coming up uh, in the last two episodes too. And I'll let Colin speak about that. But uh, you know, that's the, the website is the first place to go and please sign the petition. And if you're in Bucks County, if you're in Pennsylvania, please put the pressure on your elected officials because they're not doing enough. And frankly, if you don't put pressure on, they're not gonna do anything. That's just how it works. It's sad, it's wrong, but it takes pressure to get elected officials to act on these wrongful conviction cases. We've seen this in hundreds and hundreds of other cases, including Marty's, frankly. So keep the pressure on. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, Mr. Collin, where, uh, where can we find our podcast and, and how can we, um, is there even a possibility that we could play your podcast over our radio station? Sure. So our website is undisclosed-podcast.com. If you look at the drop-down menu under current, it has our current series for John Brookins. It has my conversations with John. I talk with witnesses involved in this case. We just had an episode with Mark and Marty talking about Georgetown and their students and the terrific work that they have done. So <laughs> We've done two episodes so far. We have our third one coming Monday and then one the following Monday. I'll have to check to see whether it can be aired. I, I imagine it can be played on your airwaves, but I'll, I'll check on that and get back to you. But yeah, undisclosed-podcast.com has our series about John and his case and his fight for freedom. Um, Celeste, what upcoming event fan got? I know y'all have an event coming up. Can you speak about it a little bit? Sure, actually, it's an event that's actually very relevant to what Karen and Colin were mentioning earlier, is that how Pennsylvania really lacked mechanisms for uh, relief. And so people like John, who are convicted either uh, of things that they might have done or uh, things that they didn't do, once you're convicted in Pennsylvania, we really don't have enough mechanisms for people to seek relief. Um, and so in Pennsylvania, those things really look like ending life without parole. Um, I know you, you talked about that, Fabe. Um, you know, that's the mandatory penalty here for first and second degree murder. We completely deny eligibility for parole for that population. Um, if we were able to allow parole, John could seek release that way. Um, and so many other people could seek release that way as well. Uh, we also think that medical parole and geriatric parole should be an option, and we don't have that here. People who are sickly uh, or, uh, or ill or people who are older um, don't have mechanisms to be able to seek relief when they're serving these excessive sentences. And then as we were talking about earlier, clemency. Uh, clemency used to be much more robust um, in Pennsylvania, and as Colin mentioned, now we have a requirement that the board has to have a 5 nothing unanimous support for people who are serving life without parole sentences or death sentences to advance to the next step of, of commutation. Um, that makes it very, very difficult. We used to operate under a simple 3-2 majority. Um, as Colin mentioned, there are bills in the House and the Senate. Right now, there's in, the bill in the House would change that vote to 3-2. to two. In the Senate, there's a bill that would change it to 4-1. to one. We do need to definitely change that vote. However, that is a long process. It has to pass in two consecutive legislative terms and then be put on the ballot. And so we're looking at that taking a, a pretty long time to institute. So in the meantime, we need to make sure that everyone knows that we need to expand clemency because it's a great way to address problems like this. As Colin mentioned, we have a great Lieutenant Governor who is the Chair of Board of Pardons, um, and he is really trying to push to expand clemency as well. Um, so if you want to learn more about what FAM is doing, you can text CHANCES to 21333. There you'll be taken to our Second Chances Agenda page. If you're specifically interested in Pennsylvania, um, also we have a great Second Chances Agenda in Pennsylvania. Um, and definitely please look out for that. But our Searchlight series is October 6th. Um, it'll be uh, Facebook Live, I believe, or streamed live on Facebook. Um, and that'll be our Searchlight series from 6 to 7 p.m. And that'll be talking about Second Chances in PA. 
And again, uh, Ms. Jennifer, we ain't heard much from you. <laughs> Any last words? Hi, thank you so much for having all of us. Um, this is a valuable platform that Johnny is so deserving of. And I hope along with the Undisclosed podcast that it, it just acts as a springboard for others to see and take on and expose his case to everyone so everyone knows what's going on. Uh, I do want to uh, let everyone know that we launched uh, a fundraising campaign for John. So we have a website, um, teespring.com, and we are selling merchandise to help uh, raise funds for Johnny's investigation uh, work. It's pretty costly. And so if everybody goes to teespring.com slash bring dash dash home, uh, we will be changing the merchandise as we go forward, but that's where you can initially go. Karen and I also have uh, extra bracelets, bring Brooke and home bracelets that we'd like to um, also promote. Uh, they can contact me directly on Twitter at Jen Tamino. It's J-E-N-T-A-M-E-N-O. And also uh, I'm on Facebook at Jennifer Lopez, Tamino Lopez, Jennifer Tamino Lopez. I'm a little hard to find. Um, but yeah, just with everybody saying everything about John, that is not by chance. It is literally who Johnny is. And, you know, so many times when people are wrongfully convicted, their voices are muted. And so I'm so happy to see there's so many awesome voices speaking up for Johnny because he's so deserving of this. He's going to be a huge asset to the community. And I can't wait until he comes home. And, um, in closing, I want to say that uh, as an artist, I would donate a portrait or painting so it could be auctioned off to raise funds for, for Johnny. Thank you. We've been looking uh, for donations. I, I will get on it real soon. Uh, it takes me a few days to get it, and y'all can option it off. Uh, it's just a gift, my, my a contribution, you know, for your fundraiser. So I just want to thank everybody and just know that I think that more shows like this should be taking place. Y'all are welcome to come anytime y'all want. Anytime. All you got to do is call me. We Let's talk about this. It don't have to be about Johnny. It could be just about wrongful conviction and we could get it in. And because I think that people need to hear more about the person. Often we just hear about the crime and the case, but we don't hear about the person behind it. And today we heard about a wonderful man named Johnny that I know personally, and I put, he could stay in my house if he come out, if they got a problem in Buck County. Bottom line, because that's how much I trust him. Um, so I want to thank Mark, Karen, Colin, Cole, Andrew, Celeste, uh, Miss Murray, Miss Jennifer, um, and to everybody, um, thank you for educating us on who Johnny is. Because often we just see pictures of him and, and hear little snips, but to hear people talk about him, the people that really know him, it's what humanize him. It's what make us want to fight for him. Because fighting for Johnny is like fighting for our own brother, sister, son, nephew, and grandson, and whoever else we have in the um, prison system. So I want to thank everybody. Um, this show will be on podcast this coming Tuesday. I will make sure you get it. Uh, we're going to keep playing it. We're going to replay it and replay it. It will be on YouTube uh, also. And we have to go. And like I said, Celeste, thank you for being the motivation that a lot of us have today. You might not know it, but your work have inspired us to keep pushing and never give up. And when we don't give up, we see results. You know, I'm a prime example of that. I'm a prime example of people fighting for my freedom. Uh, after 31 years and I was able to come home 
And that's only because people like Mark, people like Celeste, people like Karen, people like the people we see today on the screen um, put the pressure on on the Supreme Court so juveniles can get some justice. And that's why I'm here. And this is why it's so important for me to do shows dedicated to brothers like Johnny, brothers like Man Reddick, brothers like Eddie Ramirez. You know, the list go on. These are brothers that need to come home. These are brothers that we're going to bring home. And our fight is not just for ourselves, it's for all of them. So I thank each and one of y'all for being on the show and y'all listening to a Justice Conversation on Ursula Radio.